Are you serious? Are you serious? What? Six technologies of the apocalypse. I want to break them down for you right now. I did this last night on my live Sunday night show. We had over 600 people in the chat room. We had over 250 listening to the broadcast live on the radio, on Blog Talk Radio. 23 people got saved. I want to share it with you right here, right now on YouTube. I want to thank Troy for sending this information to me. There are six new technologies of the apocalypse. Um, let me read. Are you ready for the future? Uh, can I have some coffee? We live at a time when technology is advancing and an ex exponential pace, and that is absolutely the truth. And let me explain to you in these last days how very important the technologies that go on play a part in the Bible. Matter of fact, my, my book I wrote, Mark of the Beast, R-F-I-D. You can find this at my website if you go there. It will help break it down for you. I wrote this book based on current world events that have actually happened, Bible prophecy that's pro prophesying the times we live in, and an apocalyptic end-time scenario of how this thing could wind up. It's a novel, very powerful, with some unbelievable information in there for you. The book of Revelation tells us in Revelation 13 and 14 about the mark of the beast. We're going to share that with you <clears throat> in just a moment. Now, uh, number one technology of the six, facial recognition software that replaces debit cards or bank cards. Will people soon pay for things by having their faces scanned at the checkout counter instead of using those plastic cards, your debit card, your credit card? Well, according to the Daily Mail, a company from Finland has already launched this technology. Bank cards are already being replaced by phones. You can already make payments with your cell phone, your iPhone, your Android. You don't even have to pull out the plastic. You can just pay for things with your phone. Of course, you can pay online, but it's going to go further than that. You're not even going to need your phone. You're not going to need a debit card. You're just going to need to walk up and look into the screen. It will recognize you and everything about you will be recorded in a database. Um, and so that is part of the first technologies of the end times. Now what that will do, and I think that one will come in first before you get um, a mark in your forehead or your right hand is just going to be facial recognition because if we here's what the new world order is thinking if they're able to get people past the the realization that they don't need something to hand anybody they can just be themselves and that alone can pay for things then that will be desensitizing people into the next phase where you'll be required to make a choice to choose the system of the beast, which also includes denying Jesus Christ as the Savior, renouncing Christianity, and renouncing all Jews. That's part of it. When you read your Bible, that is part of it. Now, technology number two, facial recognition technology is already being used in stores and in digital advertising displays. Um... Do you remember the billboards in the movie Minority Report that could actually recognize your face when you looked at the billboard? Well, that technology is already being used in certain sectors of the public. Matter of fact, in most airports, international airports, there are ads everywhere. And when you're actually looking at the ads and reading them, the ad is recording who you are. Maybe it doesn't know your full name. But it, it looks at you, it figures out about what your age is and what your interests are and how long you looked at the ad. And then the ad might change every two minutes. And they, they, they record how many young people are looking at which ads, middle-aged looking at which ads, elderly looking at which ads, men are looking at which ads, women are looking at which ads. This is all based on facial recognition and personal profiling. What race are you? You talk about profiling. They're already doing it in the technology world and there's a reason for it. When they go to profile Christians and Jews and excommunicate them from the New World Order, 
anyone that resists the New World Order. Matter of fact, that's what the IRS is doing now with this targeting Tea Party groups and Patriot groups and veterans and Christian evangelicals is basically carving people, putting people in the list of where they want to sort them out later. Why do you think we have 800 FEMA camps for? Why do you think we have millions of FEMA coffins for? Why do you think they ordered 30,000 new guillotines for? Why does the Department of Homeland Security need 4.2 billion bullets for? Because there is a process, a, a ground floor being laid right now for the new world order or the one world government or the beast. With, and the beast will be the one world system. And the mark of the beast will be the technology used to implement the system of you can't buy or sell. And the leader of the beast will be the Antichrist. And his sidekick will be the false prophet that hates Christians and Jews. Now, um, let's go to technology number three. Google wants to put a chip in our brains. Um, would you allow technology companies to put a chip in your brain? Well, according to a recent article in a major UK newspaper, apparently this is exactly what executives at Google believe will happen someday. It began just 15 years ago as a service that enabled you to type a request into a personal computer and be given links to associate websites. Uh, things have moved rather rapidly since then. Soon, Google hopes to have an, uh, an, um, a presence of a personal assistant that never stops working, capable of conversing naturally in any language with you. Ultimately, a page and co-founder of the system says that the goal is to insert a chip inside your head for the most effortless search engine imaginable. <clears throat> you can type Google and ask Google, you want to know something about something to bring up websites. I saw my wife take her phone the other day and, and just say, spoke to her phone and said, where is the closest Starbucks? I don't, I don't know what she said. She was asking a question. And the phone pulled up all of them within 20 miles of where we were at. Okay? She spoke it into her phone. She didn't even type that. Well, what Google's saying is they're working on a microchip they can put in your brain to where you don't have to ask. You don't have to pull it up. You don't have to ask your phone. You just think about it in your own self. Maybe you just speak it out loud to yourself, and then it comes transporting into your brain. Instant information, which would be in your brain. Of course, if they can do that, they can desensitize you against the gospel by sending you subliminal messages into your brain capacity and send you a strong delusion, as it says in the Bible, and you'll believe a lie and be damned. Horrific situations are developing, folks. Technology number four. The Pentagon is developing a Terminator robot. What? Not Arnold Schwarzenegger, no. But a Terminator robot. Did you know the United States military is already building these robots? Okay, so you, they aren't quite like the Terminator yet, but apparently they are rapidly becoming very advanced. Atlas is six foot two, weighs 330 pounds. His primary purpose is said to be jo joining in relief efforts, particularly in those places where involvement of human beings is lethal or downright impossible. Boston Dynamics invented Atlas Say the robot is strong, coordinated enough to climb using its hands and feet, as well as pick its way in congested places. So it's agile. The people who have called, been called into work on the robot task are pro, uh, programming it to interact in the most efficient way it can be. DARPA has released a video which shows Atlas walking, avoiding obstacles, withstanding brute force applied at its torso and even climbing stairs. So as the robots become more sophisticated, they will, will there really be any limits to what the U.S. military or any other military of the world could use the Terminator robots? Now, also there is technology number five. 
Forgive me, I've been preaching day and night here. Forgive me. Um, number five, using only sound waves to levitate small objects. What? Are you serious? Did you know that it is possible now to levitate small objects using only sound waves? Just click, check out what a term of scientists are doing in Switzerland. Okay? A team of researchers in Switzerland <clears throat> have developed a way of levitating and transporting small objects using nothing but sound, using ultrasonic waves. That is, sound waves that f the frequency is so high the human ear can't hear it. Scientists at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, Switzerland, have made water droplets, instant coffee crystals, styrofoam flakes, toothpicks, and other small objects hang in midair by simple using sound waves. And you can't hear it. The human ear can hear it. So imagine using this technology for lying signs and wonders, as it says in Revelation, to fool the people with all deceivableness and power that the Antichrist or false prophet or both of them could have available to them to use. And then there is technology number six, ultrasonic neut uh, neuro dust. Ultrasonic neuro dust that can be sprinkled into your brain. This is perhaps the most frightening technology on the list. The advances in the field of nanotechnology that we have seen over the past decade have been absolutely mind-blowing. Now, some scientists are talking about actually being able to put thousands of tiny little computer chips the size of dust, but they're little computer chips, and dust, inside our heads. The following is from a recent Time Magazine article. Here's how it work, might work. First, you pop through the skull and the brain's dura, the membrane surrounding the brain, dipping into the brain's neural C, roughly two millimeters down, where you can position thousands of little low-powered CMOS chips, or neural dust. All right? Each of these little tiny millimoss of meter uh, in size begin capturing neural signals using electrodes and sensors that can be converted into data and sent to your brain through ultrasonic signals so they could send you thought patterns behavioral responses faith believing change your thoughts change on how you think they can plant we already shared this with you last week they can plant false memories in the brain by using ultrasonic neural dust. Folks, these technologies are being developed as we speak. Now, the Bible tried to warn us that if you take the mark of the beast, you'll, you can believe a lie and be damned. And it, and it was trying to tell you, and people were saying, I don't understand how that could be. Because the neural dust could change your will. And as Dr. Summerall has taught us many times, that we are a three-part being. We are spirit, soul, and body. Your solical part of you, is, where your conscience, is in the mind. As Dr. Summerall taught us, the battleground of the mind, the battleground of the soul is in the mind. Now God is the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. These three make one. And there's three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are one. And you are spirit, soul, and body. So, Revelation 13 tells you that the beast, it says he causes all those, that he had power to give life into the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell, save he have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Of course, that number is 666. 
Read then in Revelation 14. It'll tell you more about the damnation of receiving this mark. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're in the last day. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.